Hello, humans. Uh, today we are going to talk about geometric, geom geometry, geometric properties. Uh, this is actually going to be two videos because I have tried to make it one video four times and it's not working out for me in terms of time. So just be aware. Um, I'm not going to start the slideshow over again. The video will end. I'll start a new video and finish it off after I do the first practice problem. So just be forewarned. Remember, you can pause this video at any time. Use the guided notes to write any notes down. Uh, keep these with you. Geometric properties uh, are a collection of definitions and properties and postulates. You will use them for the rest of this lesson and even further on in your geometry course um, to prove your mathematical thinking. So why? Why do we need geomet geometry properties? Um, because they help us justify mathematically why things are happening. And it's really important to be able to justify your work and your thoughts and, and what your answer is mathematically in order to get, um, to, in order to prove what it is that you are trying to prove. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first one, I'm going to highlight these this time, is the reflexive property of congruence. So what's the reflexive property of congruence? Honestly, it says if something is something, it is something. So segment AB is congruent to segment AB. Angle ABC is congruent to angle ABC. Where you see this the most, honestly, is in a triangle. You can see my triangle. Here, we'll use the highlighter. You can see my triangle right there. If you have a line inside a triangle and maybe you're trying to prove similar triangles or something, a lot of times you'll have to say that the same line is equal in both triangles. And so that's the place that you're going to use it the most. Now, transitive property of congruence. Boom. What does that mean? Uh, this is honestly where substitution comes in for us in geometry. So if angle A is congruent, meaning the same size and the same shape, to angle B, and angle B is congruent to angle C, then we know that angle A is congruent to angle C. So they're interchangeable. Right? You can substitute one in for the other, and you know that because they equal each other, that they equal each other. Okay? Remember, write this down. Be writing these things down. Segment addition postulate. What the segment addition postulate is telling us is if the measure of angle AB is added to the measure of angle BC because they are segments on a larger line segment, then when you add them together, they equal segment AC. Okay? AB plus BC equals AC. Crazy. I know. Uh, now, midpoint, midpoint, definition of a midpoint. What does that mean? It's sort of like a bisector. A midpoint is in the middle and therefore breaks a line segment into two equal parts, just like a bisector breaks an angle into two equal parts. Um, a midpoint is in the middle and therefore the two parts are equal, right? So AB is equal to BC. Isn't it funny how sometimes it like corrects itself into a straight line and other times it doesn't? Like that's magic, y'all, I'm not doing that. All right, first practice problem. And then after this practice problem, I'm gonna cut, start over with a second video. It's much less stressful. Remember, pause, rewind, take notes. Watch it again. 
watch it 20 don't watch it 20 times watch it three times until you like really feel like you understand and then come and ask me questions if you don't understand so use the segment addition postulate to find the measure of bc do you remember check your notes did you write it down on your guided notes what is total total space the segment addition postulate says ab plus bc equals ac so let's write that down ab plus bc equals ac so now we're going to substitute in right so a b equals four plus i'm going to put my equal sign in now so i don't have to change colors again plus b c equals x these aren't going to match because there isn't a black highlighter equals a c which is 12. All right. So now what are we going to do? Now you're going to solve it just like you would solve an equation. You're going to subtract 4 from both sides because subtracting 4 is the opposite operation of positive 4. Those are going to cancel each other out. And you're going to end up with x equals 8 because 12 minus 4 is 8. Your explanation, explanation is that using the segment addition, oh my gosh, my handwriting is so bad, postulate, uh, you can find the value of x. Do you know why? Because if I use the little box that makes it, uh, write it smaller, it moves the whole thing up and you won't be able to see it on the video. So here we are. All right, pause, go back, rewatch, write down. I'll see you in the next one.